you're probably starting to realize that I'm not afraid of a challenge sometimes and a bit of a fan of destructive testing. And I think it's going to happen this time. So welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be testing this antenna. And um, it's interesting because I've already got a similar antenna, which is this one, which I quite like. Um, claims 10 to 12 dBi gain from 698 to 2700 megahertz. Um, I want to use it on the mesh-tastic frequencies around 868 megahertz, which is within the frequency range. And I tested this in a previous video. The matching was quite nice, and you could see that it um, was fairly broadband with lots of ripples in the SWR, but usable. And also, um, it has maybe 1 to 2 dBi's gain. <laughs> 1 to 2 dB over isotropic, not quite 10 to 12, but never mind, I'm not complaining, because you can't expect an omnidirectional antenna to have 10 to 12 dBi, unless it's a very long collinear, which this isn't. Um, this is the one I held up to the light to see what was inside, and it looked like it had two, I thought it was two um, concentric cylinders, um, maybe for the different bands, who knows. Anyway, so I ordered a, a, a very similar looking one. In fact, it has an identical label on it. These two labels are identical, slightly different font on this one, but it all's the same, 10 to 12 dBi, same frequency range, 698 to 2700 megahertz, quality control pass. Uh, isn't that amazing? Omnidirectional ceiling antenna. So um, I thought, well, let's get one of those. The difference with the antenna I'm testing today is that it has two coaxial outputs, two coax cables. Um, they look quite long to me. They're coiled up here. They might be, I don't know, three meters, I'm just guessing, maybe five, I don't know. And it's um, printed on the cable. RG174, ROHS. Well, it claims to be RG174, but who knows? Because I think this antenna has some slight fake characteristics, perhaps. You'll see in a moment why I'm saying that, but it um, hasn't convinced me. Anyway, this is the box it came in, which claims 698 to 2700 megahertz. Woohoo! And it's, guess what? made in China, but isn't everything these days. I'm using a Chinese webcam on a Chinese computer and um, Chinese nano VNA, so I think everything is Chinese. I think the saw also is Chinese, and I'm going to be using that very soon on this antenna because I don't trust it. Sorry. And <clears throat> just have a quick look using the nano VNA, which I think you're getting used to by now. I've set it to a sweep range of practically zero to 1,500 megahertz, because that's as high as it goes. So that's the entire sweep range, zero to 1.5 gigahertz. And the yellow curve here, which you can hardly see, unfortunately this camera doesn't uh, focus. It's a fixed focus wide angle camera, but it works well on my small desk. Um, but you can see the yellow curve, that's the one above the blue curve, for those of you watching in black and white. That yellow curve is SWR and it's calibrated at one per division. And <clears throat> so perfect matches at the bottom, SWR 1.0. The next line up, one division up is two, an SWR of two, which is okay for a wideband antenna like this. But as you can see, it's got a fairly flat SWR curve with a little bit of ripple in it, which I think is due to the cable more than anything. Um, and the lowest SWR I've got here is um, about 1.1 or 1.08, and it goes up up to nearly 1.5. This is an unbelievable result. I've got dummy loads that don't work as well as this, 50 ohm resistors. And this is giving um, a really good match all the way from down here <coughs> up to up there, 1.5 gigahertz. Doesn't work too well at DC, but neither does the analyzer. Somehow that's a little bit of an unbelievably good result. Um, who knows? I also posted a question on Amazon, very innocently, because <laughs> it came from Amazon. I wrote, why does it have two output cables or connection cables? And I got a, a whole range of answers very quickly from other Amazon users. Um, they were saying, oh yeah, well you need different polarizations or it's for diversity, or one says it's for some kind of backup connection. Other one says it's for different frequency ranges because these frequency ranges are in two blocks with a gap in between. I don't know how they make the gap. So maybe that's it. So let's try the other antenna cable, see what that one looks like. I'll take this one off and then pick up the other cable, plug that in and see if it, oh, look at that, it's exactly the same. <laughs> Interesting. 
Both antenna connections with a long cable give exactly similar looking SWR curves. It's also a bit suspicious um, because they should be different. <laughs> if there's different antenna elements inside there or different something, but they look remarkably the same. And again, it looks like a really well matched dummy load to me because uh, that's an SWR of less than 1.5 from DC to 1.5 gigahertz. Oh, I've just noted something. Do you see that blue dot on my shirt? Well, it's not on my shirt. It's on the front of this little cheap wide angle webcam. Let me just have a look in there. Oh, it's okay. I thought it might be an infrared lamp. It's not. It's also a blue LED on the front of the thing to let you know it's on. I've got other webcams that pulse infrared light out of the front for the Microsoft face recognition thing, which I don't know. Don't use. What's it called? Hello or something. Anyway, different topic. So that's a super duper match. I'm amazed. Then, of course, the next thing to do is to see how well it works as a receiving and transmitting antenna with that amazing match. I'm not going to show you that now, but um, you all know what I do. I use this VNA as a transmitter at um, 8, 6, 9 megahertz, putting out a carrier, and then I use my little tiny SA spectrum analyzer to receive the signal strength. And I compared it to uh, one of my standard antennas. This one, this is a half wave dipole, as we've seen before, which I cut open. So the hacksaw has been used before on this and trimmed it. And this should have theoretically 2.1 dBi's of gain over an isotropic radiator. When I connected up this antenna and measured the received signal strength, it was like four dBs worse than this one. So um, it doesn't quite manage the 10 to 12 dBi gain that it claims on the label. It was something like, well, who knows, minus four dBs, minus two maybe, because that might be plus two. Whatever it was, it was uh, four or five dBs worse than this antenna at 869 megahertz, my favorite testing frequency, because uh, I'm interested in mesh-tastic at the moment which is close to that frequency. So the antenna doesn't work very well. So maybe it is a dummy load after all. Maybe there is a big, or not a big, a teeny weeny resistor in there, 50 ohm resistor. So then of course, being a bit nosy, I thought let's get the DC multimeter out and switch it down to a resistance range and uh, measure what's happening because I think there's a 50 ohm resistor inside that plastic tube. You'll find out in a moment, but uh, let's see. So um, let me just check that works on short circuit. Yes, it does. So measuring between the pin and the outer of the SMA connector, what am I going to see? Ah, that's touching the outer of the inner. It's open circuit. Let me turn the light on here. Maybe we can see that better. Oh yes, look at that. I'm just trying to touch the inner pin. And it's open circuit, it's not a 50 ohm resistor, that's odd. Let's try the other one. Same thing. That's outer to outer and outer to the pin. Open circuit, so that's an open circuit. Let's, I'm trying to think about what could be going on inside this plastic tube. <laughs> of course I already know, because I already cut it open, but I'm pretending I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna try this, but if I measure between the two pins on these two connectors, inner pins, then there's zero ohms, which says that they're connected together at the other end, the antenna end, which they might be depending on the complicated construction inside there, who knows. I've switched my multimeter to beep function so that when you short the pins together, it will beep. Yeah, that works for testing in a moment. So, um, question is what's going on inside this plastic tube and as I've already hinted I did this earlier because it was a little bit of a struggle I had to find the right place to cut so as not to damage the inside of the antenna so I had to hold it up to a bright light in the dark to have a look at the shadows being cast through to find out what's in there and um, as I said I thought it might be two concentric cylinders because I've seen antennas like that before but uh, what I'm going to do now is reveal what was in there having sawed the thing open what you get is this, ta-da, and that looks to me like a biconical antenna, which shocked me when I opened it up, because I was expecting some kind of a, I don't know, a printed circuit board with a few wiggles on it, or who knows, and it actually looks like a fairly professional 
and um, reasonably well made by conical antenna. It's actually a dipole and by making the elements of the dipole very fat it'll have a wider bandwidth and by putting the conical slope on there then it'll have a wide bandwidth over a fairly wide range of frequencies. So that looks like a fairly serious um, wideband antenna uh, which might explain the amazing match um, because it, it, it really looks almost like a dummy load, it's so good. But I still don't quite believe it because the uh, received signal strength was so low. And if you look at the Amazon reviews, people are saying, don't buy this, it's rubbish, it doesn't receive any signal. And there are a lot of reviews from Amazon customers all saying similar things, which is probably why I bought it, because I want to know what's inside. I did try to cut it nicely and pull it apart where it's glued together, but they use some very good glue, so in the end I resorted to the hacksaw. And let's see how it's connected up. This is my beeping, hopefully you can hear that beeping multimeter. I'm not going to show you the screen. So um, I'm looking at the outer of the SMA plug. Okay, it's connected to there. That's the bottom element. And the other SMA plug outer, also connected to there, not there. Okay. Um, let's try the inner, which is not so easy. No touching the inner pin here. Get in there. Okay. <laughs> uh, as I guess it's top connected to there, and it should not be connected to there. I was cheating, touching the outer as well. Okay. No, it's not. That's connected to the outer, not the inner. So the, um, as you might expect for a dipole, the bottom end is the ground end connected to the outer of the coax, and the inner of the coax is connected to the top. Funny thing is that these two coax inner pins are connected together. So what that suggests to me is that the um, coax cables are connected in parallel at the top. So they're both feeding the same signal back down the line, which is cheating a little bit because there's not much diversity in that or um, different antenna segments or different frequency ranges or anything else. It's just connected in parallel. So it's a bit cheeky. And I'm, I was thinking this is some kind of a fake antenna um, because of the bad reviews and the, and the, the low gain and the claimed 10 to 12 dBi gain and the amazing match. Everything to me made me think it's it's a fake. So um, that's why I didn't mind cutting it open to reveal what's in there. I'm not sure if I should post this in an Amazon review. Please let me know in the comments what do you think. I don't want to get um, sued by the seller and or manufacturer who's called Crazy Pony and I don't want them to send their Crazy Pony over here. So <laughs> maybe I won't put this on Amazon or even link it to Amazon. But it's a fascinating piece of technology, um, a biconical dipole antenna, which should work. Um, and this leads me to think that it's maybe just a little bit poorly designed because the antenna itself looks serious and it should work. And I'm thinking that maybe these very long pieces of cable have got so much attenuation in them because it's probably not real RG174, which is also not the best cable at one gigahertz anyway. Maybe that cable is so long that it's got such high loss that it is attenuating the signals, which is why this thing doesn't work very well for receive. And also, if you put a, um, an attenuator between your measuring instrument and a load, you will see a much better SWR than the load really presents, which is perhaps why it's got that really flat um, SWR curve, which is too good to be true, because maybe all of the reflected power is being soaked up in the cable. That's what I suspect. I don't know if I'm right, because I haven't tried it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my wire cutters, <laughs> and I'm going to cut the, the coax cable and just leave the, a short piece. I'm going to cut one of these cables off right at the top, because it doesn't. it's not needed. It's, it's just adding capacitance to the center of the dipole. So I'm going to cut one off right at the top. The other one I'm going to cut off down here somewhere and put a connector on it so I can measure properly what this dipole is doing um, without having a second coax, which is completely unnecessary and doesn't help anything. So I'm going to take it off. So that's what I'm going to do next, which means I'm going to have to edit this video, which is something I don't usually bother to do, as you've noticed. So I'll um, finish this video here and then I'll come back with part two. Ah, then it doesn't need editing. I'm going to do a part two to this where I connect this, um, this biconical up properly and measure it because I'm interested because I want to experiment with broadband antennas that I can use for mesh-tastic plus other things because it's, it's interesting to listen around, see what signals are about. So um, in part two, I'll, I'll show you that. So thank you for listening. Please make comments and hopefully I fixed my audio as a few people commented it was a bit low using a mobile phone. Now I'm using a, another webcam on a laptop, as you can see. 
I mean, you can't see it, but <laughs> I am. And uh, hopefully the sound is a bit better this time. So um, as I said, I look forward to reading your comments and questions, suggestions for more videos. I might do one about polarization next, vertical or horizontal polarization, because that's also a thing and um, what can happen there. Um, so thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you